Hi, how are you? My name's Noah, Johnny. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hey, Noah! All right, I love this place. Yeah, so can I try this thing out? Totally. Ah! The problem is we don't take the time to experience everything it has to offer. You do a lot of the jewelry. Yes, I do. You want to keep it nice, even spin so the piece of glass stays on center. Uh-oh, you're losing the pattern. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> my name is Noah. Come with me and let's explore a little bit of my hometown of San Diego. downtown San Diego. When this place first started back in the early 1800s, I'm sure none of the early pioneers ever envisioned it would get to this point. After all, in the beginning, this entire area was nothing but barren swampland. But sure enough, progress prevailed and San Diego developed into a nice little town. It's amazing to me to be able to walk around downtown and see some of the original buildings that were established when our city first started. San Diego's long and colorful history is evident in its architecture, which dates back to the Wild West saloon days of Wyatt Earp. Can you believe Wyatt Earp used to hang out in San Diego? Yep, sure enough, seeking fortune and land and perhaps solace from events at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. Lawman Wyatt Earp arrived in San Diego between 1885 and 1887. He leased or purchased four or five saloons and set up a couple of gambling halls. Back then, San Diego was just a different place. I think life was different too. I'm sure it had its difficulties. It just seemed to be a simpler time. I love seeing old pictures of downtown like this one of Horton Plaza. On the left is the U.S. Grant Hotel, and the center gazebo is just about where the fountain stands today. Back then, San Diego wasn't as refined as it is today. All the streets were dirt. So, a few times a day, Studebaker sprinkling carts provided a necessary service for a growing city's unpaved roads. As I said, things were a little different back then seems the women were a little different too. Or how about this photo of Jessup's clock? Local jeweler Joseph Jessup commissioned watchmaker Claude Ledger to execute his design back in 1907. The clock's timing has only stopped three times in history. One when hit by horses, again during an earthquake, and then another time, unexplainably, the day Ledger died. You may recognize Jessup's clock. It's placed in the middle of Horton Plaza shopping mall. Remember how I said you can see original buildings from our city's past? Well, here's a perfect example of that. Built in 1870 by Prussian immigrant Isidore Lewis, the Lewis Bank of Commerce building was amazing for its time. Specializing in business loans, Lewis also operated the city's first ice cream parlor here. Today, the building is just as amazing. Being well maintained and restored, the Lewis Bank Building is a great link to our past. Over the years, our city has continued to develop and change, and so has the architecture. I've heard that at one point, the El Cortez was the tallest building in San Diego. Towering over the city, you could see it clear across town. My grandmother said one of her favorite things to do was to spend a night out dancing at the El Cortez. In 1956, a glass elevator was installed outside the building, making it the first high-rise in the entire world to have one. San Diego's leading landmark since its grand opening in 1927 received a huge makeover in 2000, restoring it back to its original grandeur, and today it's once again host to San Diego's finest events. Several areas boast new projects, which are fascinating examples of modern design. 
or simply arc of torture, depending on your perspective. One thing I never realized is there's actually an organization that cares about what the buildings look like in our town. Every year, the San Diego Architectural Foundation puts out their Orchids and Onions Award list, where they allow the public to nominate buildings throughout San Diego for either an Orchid Award, which is a good thing, or an Onion Award, which is not so good. Then, a committee heads out, visits and discusses each location to choose the winner. With the incredible appreciation of land, these types of buildings no longer became viable because you could put a building like that and those developers could pay whatever they wanted for the dirt. So these little buildings, it was their death sentence. And that's really the scale of this neighborhood and the fine grain. You can put up a great building, you know, new building, modern materials, but it's certainly walking by that structure or that structure or that structure or that structure doesn't have the same sense of when you walk by this. I followed along to get a close-up look at some of the nominees. First stop was the new Hard Rock Hotel, which was up for an Orchid Award for interior design. And I can see why. Inside, this place is awesome. Very sleek, and of course, tons of great rock and roll memorabilia everywhere. Okay, what is this right here? This is actually a 300 square foot LCD screen in our lobby. It incorporates 30,000 individual lights. Wow. It's sort of an edgy art piece, focal point as you walk in, or we can customize it for our group guests. One nice amenity I noticed at the Hard Rock was the free lotion at the front desk. I moisturized a bit and then headed down the road to the next nominee, which was Cowboy Star. Cowboy Star is a great little restaurant that's also up for an Orchid Award for interior design. Inside, it's incredible. Brick, wood, and beautiful, with a huge open kitchen. Owned by John Weber and executive chef Victor Jimenez, John said to get Cowboy Star to this point was no easy task. We started from the ground up, took out the concrete. This place used to be an auto body shop back in the 20s and we took it down to the dirt and built up from there and we're really excited with how it turned out. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay, as I said, everything looked real nice, but let's get to the real interior of this place, the food. Food, I guess you could classify as contemporary American cuisine. Uh, we have a focus on the Western field because of Cowboy Star. Uh, we do have a butcher shop located at the front part of the, the space. So a lot of our attention is put on large, large cuts, large chops. So we have a 22 ounce ribeye, we do a 40 ounce porterhouse. Um, we kind of take it back to that simpler time where you know there's big chops, big cuts. We keep it simple uh, as far as the kitchen um, and how everything is served. Not only did I have their fat, juicy steak, which was awesome, I also tried the fresh Alaskan halibut, and it was just as tasty. As I was finishing my examination of Cowboy Star's interior, I came to the conclusion, it definitely has my vote. Now that I've been to a couple of Orchid nominees, it was time to visit an Onion. So I went to the Harry West Gymnasium, which was nominated for an Onion Award for Architecture. But before I pass judgment, I thought I'd ask around a bit. Okay, so uh, what do you think about the uh, Harry West Gymnasium? I don't like the color. What's colors. wrong with the color? It's pretty funky colors, man. Yeah? Three different colors. I can see that. It kind of has that 50-50 bar thing going. Harry West Gymnasium, orchid or onion? Onion. Onion. Not only does the Orchid and Onion Awards apply to buildings, but also public art. I'm sure you've noticed, around San Diego, there's quite a bit, and some of it's, well, interesting. This year's O&O &O Awards event should be really something to see. The other day, I was walking through downtown. You know, just cruising along, admiring some of the huge high-rises we have. And then I noticed something. Downtown is like a giant toolbox. Seriously, One America Plaza is the Phillips head screwdriver. The Emerald Shapery building is a set of Allen wrenches.